Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another faith-building message by Pastor David Entry. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. May your knowledge of Jesus Christ increase as you listen. Be blessed. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in, thus Hannah, was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. Hannah was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. Another way to put it is Hannah poured out her pain from her death. She poured it out before the Lord. She poured out her challenges, her issues before the Lord. One of the things I like about our God is that he is a prayer answering God. Amen. If God is a prayer answering God, then 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 said, this is the confidence that we have in him, that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. This is the confidence that we have in him, that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. Why? Because God is a prayer answering God. The good news is, when we pray, and we pray according to his will, we are guaranteed of divine intervention and results and answers in Jesus' name. Amen. Anna was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so and vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look upon my affliction. You know, sometimes it is good to pray and Tell God about the case. God, please look at this situation and have mercy on me. Look at my marital situation. Look at my domestic situation. Look at my career. Look at what is going on. Look at my health. Lord, I release my faith in you. I believe you. I have mercy on me. Jesus spoke about the parable of a woman who went to a judge in Luke chapter 18 and was begging the judge, judge, please avenge me of my enemies. The judge will not listen to her. But after a while, when she kept persevering and pushing and pushing, the Bible says that the judge said to himself that I have to do something about this woman, lest by her continual coming she weary at me. And Jesus said in the verse 7 and verse 8, See what this unjust judge said. Shall not your heavenly father do likewise? And he says that, I tell you, your heavenly father will speedily avenge them who call upon him day and night. Mm. When you have not seen your testimony, it looks very far. But when it happens, it's like, wow. I believe many of us must have had some testimony one way or the other of something that God did in the past. Mm. David, when he was going to face Goliath, he said, the God that delivered me from the lion and the bear, I have reference. He has done it once and he's going to do it again. Some of you are believing God for jobs, for marriages. Some of us are believing God for healing, I believe in God for several things. Now, if God has done it for somebody, that means he will do it for you. Amen. 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 That's why we normally share testimonies. So you will hear what God has done for others. And you will know that if God did it for somebody, then he will do it for you. The same God who is working is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. God who is there for you in the midnight hour. Is the same God. And I see somebody receiving a testimony. Amen. 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 Anna prayed, and the priest marked her lips. And Anna vowed and vowed, verse 11, and she vowed and vowed and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaiden, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaiden, I will give unto thy handmaiden a man-child. I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. You want to say, God, remember me. 
And if you remember me, some people, you need a better job. But you have to make a covenant with God too. That once I get a better job, I will not place my church commitment secondary. I will not make it secondary. I will always make it first. So there are times when one has to make a covenant like Hannah. Hannah said, if you give me a child, I will give that child to you for the work of the Lord. In Acts chapter 10, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says that there was a man called Cornelius. He saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him, saying unto him, Cornelius, verse 4, and when he looked on him, he was afraid, and he said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. There are certain things that never leave heaven. These prayers we are doing, it will stay before God. So, it's so important we understand that some of the prayers, pray ahead. Some of you are married and you haven't spent time praying, not praying for God to give you a child. I'm talking about praying for the children God will give you. Mm. Some of us only pray for children. Until the children come, then you start praying for, about them. But pray, pray into their lives. Mm-hmm. Pray about their education. Pray about their classmates. Pray about who will be, who be their, play, their playmates in primary school, who will be their friends in college, and who will be their roommates in university. Mm. That will change a lot of things about your child's destiny. Mm. Mothers, fathers, this is the time to pray and invest prayer into the future. Why? Because the angel told Cornelius, your prayers have come before God for a memorial. Hallelujah! Amen. You have to put your petition before God. You know, I can pray for you, but I can't feel the way you feel about your challenge for you. And when you pray out of your, your pain, your prayer carries some level of meaning more than somebody praying for you. There are a lot of things happening in this season, and I want you to release your faith because without faith, it is simply impossible to receive a miracle. Yeah. 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 If you are going to receive anything, it must be your faith. Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 says that, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith of them that had it. So he said, the word was preached to us and to them, but they didn't get the profit out of it. Why? Because they didn't mix it with faith. That starts to imply we profited because we mixed it with faith. The same word can come to the same group of people at the same time, but only those who mix it and receive it in faith receive the benefits and the profits that the word of God brings. The word of God brings for profit. He says that, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as to them, but the word preached did not profit them. The word preached, the word preached, comes with profit. It is meant to profit you. Wow. Remember, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable. Profitable. The word preached did not profit them. Mm. Because when the word comes, it does not leave you. It's like a trans... Oh, thank you, Jesus. You can't talk about profit without transaction. Mm. Mm. Profit is always a function of transaction. You can't have profit before transaction. You transact. So you bring something to the table and then somebody is also engaged. And after you finish selling and you finish trading or you finish engaging and you finish the transaction, the profit is what you get, which you didn't bring on. Mm. So profit is always a function of transaction. So what does that mean? When the word of God comes to you, it's your job to begin to transact the word with faith and mix it with faith. The Bible said they did not mix it with faith. So you mix it with faith, transact. So so sometimes your mind is telling you, oh no, but how can it be? And then something is telling you deep in your spirit. Your mind is talking to you. Your spirit is also talking to you. Mm. In the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 23, it says that, Verily, very I say unto you, whoever shall say to 
this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes. He didn't say does not doubt in your mind. Sometimes your mind will be playing by your heart. Oh, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 10. It talks about with the heart. Verse 10 says that with the heart, man believes. Your heart has the ability to believe, even sometimes against what your mind is trying to say. That is why the Bible says that be you renewed in the spirit of your mind, not just the, the normalcy of your mind, but the core, the spirit of your mind, the aspect of your mind that feeds into your spirit or feeds from your spirit. Be you renewed. So it's a spiritual activity. It says that if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in your heart, not in your mind. Mm -hmm. So sometimes your heart has received a word and you can feel like, yeah, this is my word. Yes, I know, yeah, I know, this is mine. That is when faith is rising. Then your mind will tell you, oh, come on. He didn't mean you. You are not the one he was talking about. Mm -hmm. When he said somebody was being healed, you are not the one he was talking about. But who mm -hmm. else, who else am I talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who else? God's word comes to us on an individual basis. Even though all of us will hear it together, we don't all profit together. We mm -hmm. profit based on what we are hearing and how we receive it individually. Yeah. So he said that um, they heard the word, they did not mix it with faith. So this is the transaction. The word of God comes to you. It enters your spirit your heart and you choose to draw the faith he says that with the heart man believes romans 10 10 with the heart man believes and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so what does that mean when he said you believe unto righteousness he said in the sight of god there's nothing you do right like when you believe right wow. so believing in the sight of god believing means ah you have done right you've ticked every box as soon as you believe God, every other thing doesn't matter. What do I mean? As soon as you believe God, Bible says in Romans chapter 4, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. In Romans chapter 4, verse 21, 22, 23, said he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. In Galatians chapter 3, he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. In the same thing, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, Abraham believed and God said, that's righteous. What is righteous? Righteous is actions. Righteous means right standing with God. This is what it means. All God requires to be able to stand before him, he said, you've done it. Wow. You've done it. What is it? Faith. Faith. Believing. So Bible says that with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. In other words, once you believe, that means the box has been ticked. So long as God is concerned, the box has been taken. Your appeal has been granted. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 Tell somebody, heaven has granted your appeal if you believe in your heart. Amen. 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 So he says that with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made now unto actualization. After this prayer, don't go saying what you have not prayed about. Mm. Mm. Don't go say, oh, this my head is troubling. Oh, I don't think I'll do well. Don't go saying that after you have prayed about Many of us pray, and when the resource is coming, we use our mouth to cancel it. Wow. Mm. Place an order from heaven, and the delivery is coming, and you use your mouth to cancel, like if you have Amazon account. You can order something, and then you go into your account, and you can see other status. If you press cancel, it will cancel the order. And some of us, heavenly order status is very easy to cancel by saying what is different from what you prayed about. Wow. You finish praying and then you go and say something different. You finish praying and you talk differently. It invalidates the prayer. So it says, even though you have believed and God has given you the tick and has given you pass, granted, for it to manifest, you have to make sure you keep saying what you prayed. So let's say, um, you are a student, you are studying, and the course is so hard, and you pray, God, help me. After you have prayed that prayer, and you believe in your heart that God is helping you, when you finish, don't be, when your friends are saying, this course is hard, don't join them, don't say something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
If you don't have any other thing to say, don't say it's hard. Don't invalidate your prayers with your negative or contrary confession. It may not be bad. The confession may not be evil, but it is contrary to the prayer you stood on God's word to pray. Do not be caught off guard, found off guard, saying what you shouldn't say. Because Jesus says that by your words, you shall be judged. Is somebody learning something? Yes. 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 After this fasting, don't go and spoil Mm -hmm. your answers with wrong confession. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you be evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man brings forth uh, evil things. But I say unto you that, this is the one I'm looking for, verse 36, watch this. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word, what's an idle word? You didn't mean it. You just said it. But you didn't really mean it. It's an idle word. If it is a careless word, and it carries negative impact, you will pay for it. That's what it says. It says that every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give account in the day of judgment. For Watch this verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The mm-hmm. words. Now, back to the transaction of faith. So how do you transact faith? When the word comes, you embrace the word. And then you speak the word. Then the prophet begins to show. Amen. So you embrace the word in your heart. Sometimes your mind will be telling you, oh, no, no. Ignore your mind. Tell the devil, get behind me. I believe God's word. And actually start confessing, I believe it. I am blessed. I believe it. I'm blessed. What well, even you don't see what you are confessing, keep staying on God's word and confess it until you see it manifesting. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. But it starts, it starts with believing in your heart. Faith is all it takes to see the power of God at work in your life. Faith. If what you need is God, then all it takes is faith. Come on. If what you need is God, then all it takes is faith. Amen. How can you come to God without believing? Mm-hmm. Is an exercise in futility. For Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe. He said, don't come if you can't believe. Don't bother. God said, else don't bother coming if you can't believe. Because your unbelief or our unbelief, our unbelief neutralizes God's activities in our lives. Our believing authorizes God to act on our behalf. I see God acting on your behalf. Amen. Final scripture, and then we are done. Is somebody learning something? What I'm sharing is more powerful than just declaring over your life. I'm giving you the master key that makes this happen. Faith is foundational in Christianity. Everything we are doing must have faith platform. Without faith platform, forget it. It doesn't carry weight or it's not viable. It is not workable. So long as heaven is concerned, heaven can recognize anything that has not is not standing on faith. What is faith? Receiving God's word and believing it and choosing that you are standing based on God's word. Faith. Someone shout faith! Faith. faith. In John chapter 4, verse 47, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. This man's son was dying at home, okay? Then Jesus said, except you see signs and wonders, you will never believe. He said, all of, he said, you guys want to see before you believe, but blessed is who has not seen but believes. Verse 49, the noble man, this is a noble man, that means that he's a prominent person. The noble man said to Jesus, sir, Calm down as my child died. The boy is dying. This preaching is too long. <laughs> this preaching, Pastor, we are, I know what you are saying already. Just pray. Just know it's too long. Preaching is too long. The man, you are not the first one to say it. The man said to Jesus, <laughs> no, hold on. 
He is even a nobleman, a prominent man. He said to Jesus, Jesus, just stop there. <laughs> I, I get what you are saying, but calm, calm down. I came to tell you my son is dying. That's why I came. And now you're also preaching to me. And listen to what Jesus said. He said, Sir, calm down, as my child died. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Your son lives. Because I've already spoken to you, if you can receive my word, go. And what happened? Mm -hmm. Go your way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word which he said had spoken unto him, and he went his way. He hasn't seen it at home. None of them was at home. But Jesus said, Go. He said, Jesus, come. Jesus said, Go. Oh, but Jesus, I need you to come into God. I, need, I want you to do it this way. You know, if you're going to really bless me, he said, that my neighbor always troubling me. I want him just let, let him leave the area. Or, see, sometimes we prescribe how God should do it. Mm. Instead of just trusting God anywhere. However, if you do, you will always have the last laugh. Amen. Faith gives you the last laugh. Amen. So the man Amen. believed and he went his way. And Bible says that, as he was on his way going, uh, verse 51, as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son liveth. What did Jesus say? Go thy way, thy son liveth. On his way going, some people came and met him from his house. He said, your son liveth. They repeated exact words Jesus said. Uh, son, your son liveth. And then, then inquired, inquired he of them. What hour he began to amend? In other words, he asked them, what time did he begin to live? And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour. That's 24 hours. That should tell you how long the journey is. Mm. So when Jesus said go, he just began going a whole day. And so they asked him. So they, they traveled and came and met you and said, your son is alive. And he asked them, what time did he begin to be alive? And um, then inquired him when they said, and they said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son live it. That was the time. And you know what made the difference? He believed it. Mm. I want to tell somebody, I stand here as a prophet and I say, go your way, your son live it. Amen. Go your way, your son live it. Amen. Amen. Your, your life can never be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Karis Church and subscribe to our podcast so you are always up to date. Be blessed.